This is a homebrew podcast. Slay the Stars is a D&D actual play podcast you're looking for. A dark fairy tale cosmic fantasy. Now that's what I'm talking about. Listen in every other Tuesday at noon, Eastern Standard Time on any major streaming platform. Slaythestars.com, Persomnia at Astra. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Mythcraft the Podcast. Let's go around and introduce our auspicious anarchists. Roger. Lucian Del Wary. They say the truth will set you free, right? Right? Andy. Kiris Mara. Oh, Lucian might hate me soon. Nathan. Toman the Broman. <laughs> <laughs> Cody. Rumblethorpe, ready to kill some, whatever you call them, Rashlands? Mal? This is Featherfoot. I'm feeling really good about our chances of rescuing everyone. Yes, really good. And Tanner. Uh, Gordon Blue, I hope I didn't disturb anybody sneezing in the hallways. (laughs) (laughs) Super exciting announcement, everyone, that playtesting for Kings of Tyranny Part 2 releases next week week make sure you hop into the discord at discord.gg mythcraft for new content for your table when we last left off the party had done some exploration and fundraising of sorts <laughs> in posh uh, they made some dough and got to know each other better including a new pact between kittis and lucian uh, thistle and lucian opened their gifts from kittis And Lucian got a surprising bit of information from Kittis' testimony of her time in Vanith. With the week having passed by and the travel to Rashalan on the horizon of the next day, the party awakens. And just like the last three weeks, you all head down to uh, kind of the dining facility area where you have been going to, except this time... You head down and you don't see the like group of students and faculty that are normally there. The only people present are General Tovalt, Dean Livingston, Brick, as well as three other individuals that you haven't really seen before. There is a what appears to be an older dragon folk male who is standing there, as well as two other humans wearing Rashalani uniforms. As you head down, General Tovald looks up. Ah, oh, there you are. So, uh, I have something for you all. And he puts six different Rashalani uniforms in different sizes on the table. Uh, if you would all do me a favor and go ahead and get changed uh, and meet us back here whenever you're ready. Toman saves time and uh, changes in front of everyone. <laughs> Damn! Hey, some of that bullish strength is still left in you, brother! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm right at eye level, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Even the entire week that Thistle and Toman were rooming together. That was not observed. (laughs) But yeah, once everyone gets changed and comes back, uh, Dean Livingston gestures over to the dragon folk male that's there. Uh, Yes, so our associate here is going to open up the portal so that you all can head over to a small house that we... Acquired. Yes, yes, we'll use that word. Acquired. Uh, On the outskirts of Tiberia. Now, unfortunately, you are going to be a little ways away from the keep, but that's primarily because we don't want to raise alarms by teleporting into the city. There are preventative measures that Rashalan appears to have taken to prevent anyone from teleporting in too close to the keep besides their own people. So, we did acquire this house. When you get there, there will be a stack of papers that will be your assistance in 
infiltrating your way into the keep in order to access the dungeon. These are all pretty standard transfer papers that we have, again, let's use the word acquired, in order to assist you in this endeavor. Uh, you'll all be traveling from, uh, transferring from different areas, Nent, Chi, a few different regions that uh, are under Roshalani occupation at the moment. Uh, and you are transferring to the keep to become guards for the dungeon to assist with the Colosseum. It's something that happens pretty regularly to, uh, based on our information. Do you have any questions at this point? Will you miss us? I personally will uh, miss the excitement that you bring to this university. Uh, you all have been very interesting. Um, if we go in and it's bad, do we have a way out? So that is where Brick is going to come in. He will give his part of this briefing here shortly and give you a little bit more information of the layout of the dungeon and any potential escape routes should you need them. We're hoping that you don't, uh, besides what has already been put into place with some of our allies. Uh, again, we have an ally who is working with one of our spies from R10, who has been working very closely on finding you an escape route. To my knowledge, there is something that has been put into place. I do not have any information, though, for you. Uh, all I know is that you will be listening for the phrase shine, to which point you will give the counterphrase gold. Uh -huh. Can you um, repeat the phrase? You will be listening for the phrase shine to which point you will respond with the counterphrase, gold. That is how okay. you will be able to identify each other and not potentially disclose information to the enemy. We want this to be a non-lethal escapade. We do not want any bloodshed, not yours or others, because that will raise alarms. And if we raise alarms, then that will be construed as an all-out act of war. We already know that there are tensions, there are potentials for war. However, at this point, no one has actually taken an official act. There's been subterfuge, there's been infiltration, there has been espionage. But there has not been a blatant attack on either side yet, and we would prefer not to be the ones making the first move. This is a game. As much as it may not feel like it, we need to be strategic and how we make our moves. Now, your alliance with Chahosrin, Roshlan has attacked Chahosrin, but that doesn't extend to you. Is that what you're saying? As of yet, no. Very uh, well. Pash has declared a stance at this point. We are siding with Chahosrin, but we have not yet made an, a blatant act of war. Yeah, you can side with someone diplomatically or economically without... Okay, I see. Now, if it comes to that, yes, we will be siding with Jehosrin in an act of war, if and when it gets to that point. We just do not want to be the one to make the first move. Well, this is intended to be a bloodless mission. Correct. Great. Darren, you can come on in. This is going to be good training for you. Describe a little bit of what your, your page looks like. Yeah, Darren's... Uh boy in his late teens, older than Hildegard, he's like 19-ish uh, college age, like younger college aged. Uh, he's got like kind of a medium tan and tousled black hair. It looks like he's trying um, with mild success to grow some kind of mustache. Um, and he's got like kind of greenish, like forest green eyes. Um, he is more elbows and knees than like muscle, but he's working on it. Perfect. Yep, he just, he kind of comes walking up and gives that super nervous bow. Darren, this is the team. Team meet Darren. Darren's my what is, page. What is that? What it's do you mean, what? He's my page. Yeah, you can treat him I like an intern. I think it's a mustache, Kiris. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> uh, he's a human. <laughs> We've seen loads of those. I, how did I not realize? Thank you, Bissell. <laughs> At this point, uh, Brick walks forward. 
So, we have a few options for the escape should things go bad. The quickest way is through... He kind of gives this look that you wouldn't particularly think you would see on a golem of being real uncomfortable. The torture room where the bodies are dropped. We should be able to remove the grate pretty easily, to which point we jump down. That is the fastest way out. Sounds like as good a plan as any. Weren't there, were there other options? There are multiple entrances into the dungeon, but you want to avoid the stairs leading up from the chapel. Those lead directly into the throne room. Right. I mean, whatever makes us look legitimate without getting too close to people that don't realize that we're not legitimate. If everything goes well, we should not need anything but the front door. I like it. General Tovald will step forward. All right. At this point... The concern that I have is that we do not know anything about how many guards there are, what their proficiency is, or anything. The largest concern is that their security has been increased. That is why we do not want to set off any alarms. We want to focus on stealth, get in, get out, be silent. If security is increased, it seems like we've got the perfect cover, right? Because more guards is not going to raise suspicion. That is our hope. However, if any of you think that you may not be able to make it in quietly, if any of you think that you might give away your position, our other operatives here will be staying behind at the house to attempt to offer distant support. They will be there to extract should things go wrong. They are both very skilled. They are both very proficient in what they do. Should you need it, they will support you. They will have your back. But if any of you feel like you will not be able to pull this off in, in a stealthy manner, I invite you to stay behind at the house with them to be able to offer the support should it be needed for extraction. Once you return... Once you get back to the house, a portal will open up to bring you all home. So, we get in, we go find who we're looking for, everybody gets back to the house, we snap our fingers and we're home? For lack of a better explanation, yes. That is the gist of it. That is the meat and potatoes. Is is there a limit to the capacity of our transport? How many people are we expected to be coming back with and is that going to hinder... Uh, our ability to come back. We have contingencies for if we need to bring more back than what we can originally withstand. As of right now, we are under the impression that there are 12 prisoners that will be liberated during this mission. We do not know if there are more. That is all that our spy has told us. In terms of our Poshin spy, again, I do not know if he has taken on another guise. I do not know if he is in any form of undercover or anything. Listen for shine. Respond with gold. Understood. All right. Do we have any other questions? Now is the time. You miss me. These last three weeks have been interesting, having you follow me around. And since you are now an individual without a home Posh could always use a barrister so you will you can just say it he looks at all of you return home safe we do not need to lose any more allies and he looks at Kiddis or any more friends Gordon's just giving him like a very a thumbs up with a very (laughs) gummy (laughs) smile (laughs) all right so the uh, dragon folk individual will step forward and start working on his incantation. This takes 
takes a little bit. Uh, opening up the portal does take uh, a few minutes to be able to get going before you start to see it form. Before you start to see it form and open up, uh, and everyone can walk through. Before Kyrus goes, Kyrus is just gonna look back to General and just be like, G- "General, dearest, uh, obviously I can't bring." my steed with me so he's all your responsibility please make sure he's fed um just go to the stable up north trust me you'll know which one he is it's just gonna like run through the and not give him a chance to answer like as you step in you hear fuck and then you disappear <laughs> <laughs> and, and everyone appears in just a little house um it's not very it's not very decorated. Uh, it is fairly small. Uh, all of you are not super crammed being in here, but uh, you also don't have a whole lot of room to spread out and go around. Uh, as you look over, uh, you appear right next to a fairly large table with some chairs on it. Uh, as you look over, you see a desk on the right hand side of the room and you see that there are six scrolls bound and tied up with a Rashalani seal imprinted on them. The two gentlemen who came with you will gesture over. Uh, all right. Uh, so there are your papers. Oh, those are our papers. Yes. Uh, those are your transfer papers. Those are the papers indicating uh, that you are transferring from different regions. Uh, so we have here, he pulls out a piece of parchment from his paper. Uh, Tomin, you are a transfer from, uh, looks like you are a transfer from Chi. You are being transferred over from the naval yard there as a guard to, uh, become a guard for the, the dungeons and the Colosseum. Uh, that is going to go the same with, uh, looks like Lucian and Gordon. Uh, all three of you are from Chi. You all worked the shipping yards over there. All right. Uh, the naval plant fact- factory. Hang on. The fuck word am I looking for? Here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to go with that. Uh, and then we've got Thistle, Rumpelflorp, and Kittis. Uh, the three of you are transfers from Nent. Why wouldn't I be from Venice? Uh, we thought about that um, because of what you reported as your separation from Vanith we are worried that the emperor there spoke with Nerian and has informed him of who you are, what you look like and if for some reason you happen to run into Emperor Nerian he has seen you, correct? True. So by saying you're from, there's just too many things that line up there. So that's why we are going from Nent. Um, There is a village there that does have a uh, number of, uh, that does have like a a fiend blood population there as well. And so we are hopeful that that will be a bit more kind of understanding. Um, Thistle, there is a fairly large uh, Klepin village in Nent as well too I believe one of the prisoners is actually a Klepin from Nent but uh, there are some we're hoping that this will work out well Um, Rumpelflorp I was told to give you a message Um, let the others talk if guards arrive (laughs) Uh, I don't know why that's just the message I was given Um, I was told you didn't need a backstory I don't know. Um, All right. <laughs> uh, oh, shit, I see here. Uh, it says, never mind, don't tell him that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You guys, I, I've been told you are very knowledgeable, that you are very professional. Um, we are going to be here. Uh, he gives a piece of paper that has something written on it, but uh, Kittis, you recognize it as being used in Vanith for some of the espionage. Uh, this is crane paper. Uh, it's also the same paper that the note was sent to General Tovald about the prisoners. 
but this one looks a little different. It's got a different tinge to it. Uh, this is essentially an enhanced crane paper. Uh, it will not fly. Uh, it will appear directly to us. It has one-time use. It is not something that we have a lot of. So if you run into trouble, if you need an extraction, simply think brick and this will fly straight to us. Unfortunately, Brick will not be able to come with you because he has run from Rashalon. He is a uh, he is a refugee. And so if he comes with you, that is going to increase the risk of you being caught. All right. If you need something, just hold this paper. Think Brick. It will disappear from your hand, appear straight to us. And we will we have a way of getting to you very quickly. And believe me, whenever I say myself and my associate are very skilled in taking out a large group of people should we have to. We do not want to, though, okay? That is not something we want to do. We do not want to draw first blood. Understood. All right. The keep, you can't miss it. Head over there. Present your papers at the gate. Tell them that you are here to transfer for the Coliseum. They will direct you to your orientation stations, at which point you should be able to head down to the dungeon get a lay of everything that you need to work on trying to find the spies and save our people. All right. Very well. Right on. toman has been like casing the layout of the house during the briefing, just checking for blind spots, checking out the second floor and the little bathroom up there. Yeah. I mean, it is very much. Um, so yeah, this is actually for the, layout as you go upstairs you do find that there are a couple of bedrooms upstairs oh. uh it's a it's a two-story map but i couldn't make it like two stories so yeah, i just yeah. laid them side by side nice. uh a couple bedrooms and stuff it's it's again very barren uh there is no evidence that anyone has lived here honestly uh you have no idea how they came across <laughs> this house but uh this is essentially where they have set up their base of operations for the time being all right, and so uh, as you all get ready, uh, Brick will then, we are here if you need us. Good luck. And you all head out into the city of Tiberia. Where we're going, we don't need luck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah. <laughs> like it is like loads cool. of it. Oh, I think he's like cool. he doesn't want it. Speaking of luck, uh, can everyone give me a luck roll, please? <laughs> <laughs> what about fortuity? Fortuity will work, yes. 14. 10. 13. Crying over here with a 10. <laughs> oh. I also got a 10. <laughs> the end of plus 8. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Um, so even with the 7, the average is higher than 10. Um, anything below a 10 and uh, it may not have worked out very well for everyone, but uh, you are able to make it through. You're in your Rashalani uniform. As you walk through the street, you notice that the uh, the civilians walking through here kind of move out of your way. Uh, not, It doesn't look like out of fear or anything like that, just like they don't want to hinder you in your duties. Uh, as you look around, you see many, many references to the Celestial Council, uh, different, uh, a couple different deities in this council. You're not seeing any reference to any other pantheon type. There's no uh, reference to the fiends or the the archfey like you would see in maybe Posh, where there's a melting pot of people and they have different temples for different pantheons. There is only uh, temples for the Celestial Council here. Um, the city itself, though, appears to be bustling. There is quite a few individuals uh, with booths set up along the side of the road. Uh, there's a bazaar going on a little ways down uh, off of the roadway. You see different inns and taverns and shops of a different variety. The biggest thing you notice as you begin to walk through though is every single shop every single tent every single building has on it somewhere a shield emblazoned with a griffin this is full Rashalani territory and the the military 
and everything here um, is very well represented. There are numerous guards patrolling the streets. They're all in the same armor, same weapons, marching with the same kind of cadence as they begin to patrol with their partners walking in step, appearing very coordinated. Question. Kyle, if it's oh, if it's possible, we're probably going the same direction here. Probably. Can I make can I make like a? Uh, I want it to be more so from the like charisma side, like a Savlaw Fair type of thing. I want to like be mimicking and figuring out exactly what their strides, what their formations, like what their mannerisms, even some of like the snide gestures or like the the commentary that I could eavesdrop or overhear to like better figure out how to. For Lucian, this is a role he's pretending, and not so much from like the intelligence or like tactician side. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, was I will say let the same you. exact thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give everyone an option here of what you what you want to do the role. You could do a charisma, or you can do uh, an intelligence. So either charisma or intelligence, you can do either of those roles. Can I use uh, Savoir to actually roll for this? I am going to say, I'm going to say yes. That's a dirty 20. Nice. 14 for Lucian. 11 for Gordon. How's um, military? Uh, I will allow military, yes. Sweet. Nice. 17 for Tommen. He has a plus zero total with military because he <laughs> has a negative intelligence. Mm. So, yeah, the military role actually adjusts the DC. So I'm going to say, so Rumpelflorp, what are you trying to do? (laughs) I mean, I was just trying to, you know, not stand out. (laughs) Well. (laughs) (laughs) So as everyone looks over at Rumpelflorp, uh, no one noticed that he put the bowl on his head as his helmet (laughs) that um, Gordon cleaned off. Looks great. Looks great. (laughs) So... That is his helmet. And it explains so much. He like people start kind of giving him looks, but because he is traveling with uh, primarily Toman and Kittis, who are fully mimicking the exact movements of the rest of the squad and the rest of the soldiers, because he's traveling with them, they don't think too much of it. And just the fact that this guy's fucking weird. But otherwise, they don't think too much of the fact that like, oh, he doesn't belong here because Kiddus and Toman both are falling in step with the rest of the squads. And so, yeah, they they kind of glance at him a little bit and then move on about their business uh, as everyone else kind of starts working on falling into step. Uh, the only ones who are kind of struggling a little bit is just Rumpelflorp and Thistle. They're the only ones struggling a little bit, and I think it's just because their size. Thistle keeps getting distracted by <laughs> the bull on Rumpelflorp's head and will, like, trip every few steps out of panic of, like, oh, God, he looks different. Um, how do, like, the other guards treat civilians versus, like, other guards? Like, is it... Are they mean? Are they nice? Like, what is the general exchange between the different levels of authority? There does not appear to be... um, There appears to be a lot of respect coming from both the civilians to the guards and the guards to the civilians. Okay. Uh, There is not a lot of, uh, like, rudeness or disrespect or anything like that coming from either party there seems to be a very kind of cohesive relationship here between them. And so uh, even like as you walk by some of the civilians, like I said, they kind of move out of your way, uh, but you'll see people like kind of give you the head nod every once in a while. uh, And then kids who will like wave for what reason you're not entirely sure, but there does not appear to be any discord between civilians and guards, uh, at least in this section of the city that you can see. But yeah, so you guys travel through. Uh, It takes you, I would say, probably a few hours um, to get from where you were to the keep. Tiberia is a fairly large city. 
um, and where you poured it into was the very edge to avoid setting off any kind of alarms. So I am going to ask for probably one more luck check from everyone. Um, however, because of the fact that everyone was kind of falling into step, uh, I am going to say the DC is lowered on this one. Fortuity again? You can do Fortuity, yes. Net oh. 20. Nice. There we go. Only a five for Tillman. Nice. What? <laughs> Whoa. I'm lucky not 20 um, for Lucian, yeah. So... I'm going to say with the two nat 20s on that, you guys are good. You guys are completely fine. No one's giving you another second look. Uh, as you get a little bit closer to the keep, even the bowl on Rumpelflorp's head, like, I feel like you guys have, like, maneuvered enough to where he's, like, behind Kiris and Toman to the point where he's not so easily noticeable. You guys have fallen into such a cohesive step at this point, and I genuinely feel like at this point, like, Kiris or Toman or someone has like reached over and taken the bowl off of his head or something. And you guys are actually moving in sync and in step to get to the keep and are, are golden. Uh, no one is giving you a second look. Civilians are waving and, and you know, all of that. Uh, as you make it to the front gate of the keep, uh, as you begin to walk up, one of the guards steps forward, orders and holds out his hand. Lucian steps up uh, and he essentially just presents it immediately, falls into like rank and file appropriately. Um, and he just goes into the very briefest of basics. <clears throat> Transferring from she, assistance, previous time in the shipyards, excited, eager to serve, and just presents his paper forward. Uh, he breaks the seal, opens it up, and closes the scroll back up, hands it back, holds out his hand to the, for the next person. Lucian walks a little bit ahead and waits. Likewise, transferring from Chi. Grabs it, pops it open, opens up the scroll. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, anyone else from Chi? So while that was happening, Gordon would have taken a sip of a bullish strength brew to bulk up so they don't question his age, and he's just, like, thick as shit. Oh, yeah, I'm also yep, uh, Chi as well. Breaks it, opens it up. Fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> he looks at it a little bit, looks over. How long until you retire, old man? You see these veins in this neck? I'm going to keep going until I can't. Give me a charisma check. <laughs> um, Will Savoir Faire work for this? Um, I don't know about Savoir Faire. Um... I don't have anything else. That's great. I can roll with charisma. Okay, not bad. 22. Woo. Okay. Yep. You are... He looks at you and kind of looks down. Um, because you drank the bullish, your DC went down a little okay. bit. Um, and so the DC for this actually was 20. You got a 22. <laughs> um, so he looks down. Who am I to question? Anyone else from Chi? All right. Uh, you three, where are you from? We're all from Nent. Holds out his hand for the she, She's going to reach down and grab Rumpelthorps and grab <laughs> missiles and hand all three at the same time. Uh, grabs them all, cracks them open, starts to take a look. Um... <laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh. For our <laughs> listeners who aren't seeing this, <laughs> Kyle has been rolling a d20 for each... Uh, paper that he's been cracking open. And, and I just he rolled, just a, nat rolled a natural 20. <laughs> Nent doesn't even exist! <laughs> Liars! <laughs> <laughs> Who's, whose paper was that for? Why are you going to ask that question? No, that is important. a good question. Um, okay, so I'm going to say, I'm going to roll a it's d4. no one's fault. <laughs> a one, a one is Kittis, a two is Rumpelflorp, and a three is Thistles, and a four I will reroll. It's ha, one is Kittis. It's okay. Uh, so he opens the paper, looks at it, and then looks at Kittis. Nent, huh? Nent. We're at a Nent. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Do I know? Does Kittis know any place in Nent? Otherwise, I'll play this a completely different way. Give me, uh, you can try to rack your brain. Give me 
an intelligence check. Fucking, this is not gonna go well. Yeah, it's a <gasps> seven. Um, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, your 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 brain's kind of going a little blank when you start trying to think of cities in Nent. She's Nent just, Tucket. She's just gonna respond quickly. <laughs> she didn't want to do this, but she's gonna just look and she's just gonna be like, "Look at me. Where do you think I'm from?" Oh I'm shit. From Nent. Oh shit. Um. Yeah. Go ahead and give me. Uh. Go ahead, give me whatever check you want to use for that. Can I use persuading? I will allow persuading, yeah. That's a 28. Nice. God. Yeah. Uh, he looks... <sighs> hmm. Yeah, I guess you would be kind of stupid to walk in here without being legit. I mean, we would kill you for less than wearing that uniform if you're not actually Rashalani, so... I will say, though, I'm going to be keeping my eye on you at least. You understand. You are from Nent, after all. Of course. Plus, I'm easy on the eyes. Uh, he will then crack open thistles. And that was a 13. And then he will crack Rumpelforbes. I can't say God it. Damn I can't it. say Why? it. God damn it. <laughs> Another <course>. nat 20. <laughs> Another God nat 20. damn it. Rumpelforbes uh. going back to the house. <laughs> He looks at Rumpelflorp. So where are you from? I am from Nent. Where at in Nent? The forest. <laughs> the the forest. Yeah, I'm a Brunei. Maybe you've never heard of me. We live I, in the forest. So I mm, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to do something real quick. And I'm going to show you all the region map for this area. <laughs> it's a pure desert. It's it's like a, a little mountain range. And this is Nent down here. <laughs> it's not very foresty. And, and there's no forest Where in Nent. Down uh, south. Uh, yeah, south of Jehosrin. <laughs> yeah, there's, like, there's at least like a... There's a couple of trees clustered together <laughs> somewhere. There might be a tree. <laughs> <laughs> the most you see is like three trees grouped together. Yeah, um, if you're from Nint, though, that's a forest. Yeah. True. Fuck. <laughs> uh, he's going to reach back and snap his fingers uh, as one of his partners comes walking up. Where, what forest? What, what, where at in the forest? I just shrug. I don't think I have a name. Uh, is there anything else anyone, is there anything anyone else is wanting to do at this point? Would we I have, mean, I could yeah, throw out a overheard? deceiving check or something. You can give me a deceiving check. The DC on this is going to be fairly high. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it's all I got. <laughs> a 19. 19. Uh, not bad, not good. Against yeah, but that, 20. Was, that was old man Harlow's roll. You gotta roll again, dude. <laughs> uh, well, that was uh, the correct stats. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything anyone else is wanting to do to maybe try to, like, intervene or anything? Can I roll to see if I know anything about Nent enough to try to help? Uh, you can give me an intelligence check. I want to help, but at this point, Gears cannot... <laughs> Um, would nature work or cartography? Perhaps I've seen a map. Oh shit, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that was oh, so close to a nat second. twenty. Um, it is instead a dirty twenty. As Thistle starts to think, they remember the map that they looked at did not have any forests in Nent. Um. But there was like swamp land closer to the mountains. Okay. <clears throat> if if I may, um, excuse me, sorry. So there is I don't know if you how familiar you are with Nent, there is, you know, that little patch of swamp land over there. I've traveled a bit more than he has, you know, when you haven't actually seen a forest, that little swamp land kind of feels like one. You know what I mean? 
Give me a... Go ahead and give me a charisma check. No! Uh, your DC on this is is not going to be super, super high. How about persuading? Sure, go ahead. Okay. It's an eight. Oh, I don't know them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 so close. Wow. He got a he got a nine too. on his in on his intuiting. I think he, got a he nine shouldn't have that plus two, actually. <laughs> I think that should be a seven. Is there anything else anyone is wanting to try to maybe throw in there uh before I make final resolutions here? If there's any way I can just like try to look in charge. I'm not gonna verbally get involved, but like they're transferred like an intimidating into check. Yeah, they're transferred into my like care. I'll keep an eye on these Maybe like they could just ladies. go to the dungeon. <clears throat> so you're just wanting to seem like you're in charge and like you are in charge of Rumble Floor. Yeah, I don't know if that's that's probably charisma. Strength or intelligence, I would love, but it's probably charisma. I feel like how I would picture this mm, you're trying to appear like you have some like kind of you're trying to assert like that dominance essentially is how I'm kind of picturing it so I think I would take menacing I would love to give you menacing but I don't have it that's a (laughs) crit it's 26 total they like look over as Toman is like standing. Like rolling his eyes, but like standing at attention otherwise. <laughs> um is Toman saying anything at this point as they like as it like both the guards kind of look over at Toman and see this like intimidating presence with like these big muscles standing over Rumplethorpe essentially. Yeah, if uh if they like once I once I catch their attention I'll say he's a strange one, but I'll I'll keep him in line. Alright. Well, um we need all six of you to report to the second floor to go through your orientation. You will be assisting with the Coliseum according to your transfer orders. Uh you will be here for the next month, at which point you will transfer back to your duty stations. The prisoners will be in and out of the dungeon for the time being as they are taken over to the training facilities. That is where they will be spending a lot of their time. For now, though, go do your orientation. As soon as you walk in, the stairs up to the left to get to the dungeon be the stairs down to the right. Understood. What? I'm sorry. One more time is stairs up to the left and then down to the right. Up to the left for orientation across the room, across the hall from that, down back to normal, and then down to the right to the dungeon. Into the dungeon. All right. All right. Welcome to Tiberia. And then they'll, they will step forward and then, like, turn around and watch you all walk into the keep. Uh, looking super sketch. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. Thin ice. <laughs> thin ice. <laughs> Uh, you said six of us. Is is Darren back at the house with everyone else, or is he with with us? Oh shit! I guess I didn't ask if you were bringing him with into the espionage or having him stay back with the proficient mages. I guess so I forgot on, to ask on that. On a meta level, I don't want him here, but I would not have <laughs> thought that before this whole thing. So like, he he would be here. Here, okay. would have said something though. Okay. All right, okay. <laughs> Here's would have definitely been like the twig does not come. <laughs> Has anybody seen the Fallout series? Uh, I've seen up to yeah. two episodes. So the in the Fallout series, this isn't huge spoilers, but there's like the knights who are in like mm-hmm. the armor yep. and they have squires and the squires are yep. like normal people carrying big ass bags of like, yep. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like Gundam cool. equipment. I just imagine that's like Darren. <laughs> <carrying> <laughs> all but yeah, if, if Curious puts her foot down, then Tillman will like him and haw about it. He's like, well, he needs like in in field training but we'll leave him back at the house perfect okay all right uh so yeah you enter into the keep uh as you walk in you see the stairs going up to the left and you see the stairs going down to the right up to the left as long as we're not exiting a chapel it's always to the left (laughs) 
I think you might be onto something. <laughs> uh, as you head up, you see that there is uh, a room kind of right off of the stairs as you go up. Uh, and you see that there are a number of soldiers standing outside of this room uh, in full uniform, uh, gesturing for you to head over and go inside. Uh, as you do head inside, you are told to uh, provide your orders uh, as you hand them over. Then you are kind of given a brief rundown of what your duties will be while you are here for this next month. A lot of those will uh, surround either patrolling the dungeon and making sure that the prisoners are kept alive and provided for, while the other extent of those duties are going to be observing and ensuring that while in the training grounds, no one is trying to sneak weapons back, no one is engaging in any kind of escape, things of that nature. Uh, you are told that your commanding officer for while you're here is going to be Sergeant Maximus. Um, that is going to be your commanding officer while you are here. That is who you will be getting your orders from, who you need to report any incidents to, things of that nature. Uh, that is going to be your commanding officer on your shifts. Uh, they are putting you all in the same shift for right now. Um, however, you are informed that you will be rotated as needed for coverage, essentially. Uh, any questions? No. Negative. Where are we going to sleep? You'll be sleeping in the dorms. Uh, you will have a bed assigned to you whenever it is time for the end of your shift. Uh, be aware and be respectful of whoever would be sharing the same bed with you on the opposite shift. Uh, you will be rotating, so make sure to make your bed after you are done using it and do not leave any sort of crumbs or other unsightly leave-behinds whenever you get up. Again, they are assigned to you and we will know. Are there any areas that we are not allowed to go? As of right now, the dorms and the dungeon uh, and the training grounds should be the only places really that you're going besides the dining facility and obviously when you're off duty you can walk around the city and do everything but uh, there should be no reason for you to be in the throne room in the armory or anything along those lines just focus on your duties and again you're not captive you're not prisoner so when you're off duty do whatever you want what the what the dining hall when does that uh, open up for breakfast, and how will we be going about uh, getting food? Just follow your commanding officer whenever uh, your shift starts and everything along those lines. Uh, in fact, shift change is in 10 minutes, so you might as well just head down to the dungeon now and work on getting yourself acquainted. Thank you. How do they, how do they salute? That's a good question. Because I'm a big fan of saluting. And Gordon wants to salute them, but he doesn't know how. Live long and prosper. <laughs> yep, you you were not informed of how Rashalon's salute before you came here. <laughs> Gordon's going to be didn't, giving him we didn't a see big any on the way. dummy smile and a <laughs> thumbs up. No one, no one saluted you or anything like that because uh, the patrol are typically all the same rank. Uh, commanding officers will patrol through every once in a while for any issues, but uh, everyone you saw was the same rank, so it's not like anyone saluted. They give each other the woogity, woogity, woogity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I make a in. history check, see if I picked that up during my time studying in Lycrodan? Go ahead. Would General Ooh. T Daddy have told me? <laughs> 18 for uh, the history check. Um, <laughs> I will say that like, as you kind of get dismissed... Um, you, Toman, you remember seeing in one of your missions that you ran where you engaged with some Rashalani soldiers in uh, some way, shape, or form that both arms are crossed over the chest and the bow of a head. Toman will so, do so. Gordon will follow suit. Same here. Yeah, I guess we're all doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but waterfall. there's like... There's like a split second, like, 
It's not that Lucian doesn't trust Toman at all here, but it's like he wants to see how this is, like how does this individual respond to it for that first like split second before he goes forward with this. Because if he's going to be looking down, he's not going to see how it's received. So he wants to like catch that for a second or two before he joins in. Uh, since Toman is the first to do the salute, uh, this individual bows their head ever so slightly to each person who gives the salute. Beautiful. Definitely joins in then. And so, yeah, you all are uh, shown your way down to the prison. Uh, and as you arrive, uh, you hear it's pretty quiet down here. There's no old man screaming. My stomach hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you can hear. Well, I guess we should start doing our rounds. Get familiar with the place. See if there's any troublesome individuals. All right. Do we split up? Do we go in pairs? How many directions does it look like we can go? Uh, only one. So as soon as, you e- okay. as, as soon as you exit out of the stairs, you see that there is one hall that leads uh, kind of to the north of where you exited out. Uh, as you do cross around this, uh, we'll say that just for sake of argument, all of the hallways here are approximately 15 feet tall, uh, carved out of white stone, and illuminated by candelabras placed about every two feet along the wall. Uh, all the doorways that do not have doors, so all the archways, are going to be carved stone archways with... Um, Insignia is kind of carved into it of uh, griffins, swords, shields, things of that nature. Uh, and then any of the doors are going to be heavy wooden doors with iron latches on them. And so just kind of a general overview of what the entire room looks like, except for sp- specified rooms. Um, so as you guys travel down the hallway, you do see off towards the right is a chapel area. Uh, This actually appears to be a very small one, and you kind of get the impression that this is not a prisoner chapel. This is for the guards to be able to practice. Uh, As you head down, you find one of those doors, you open it up, and you see that there is another long hallway uh, that branches off to the left and the right, as well as a number of doors that you recognize as being uh, lavatories directly in front of you. Left first. And there so are left people first. in this hall? Uh, there, there are guards kind of patrolling. Uh, they glance at you and don't really give you a second look. Uh, they're just kind of doing their rounds as they walk by. Some of them may like kind of do that head nod to you. Uh, again, you're all in uniform. You, you've been sent down here. No one's really questioning you being here. Kyrus would like to stop one of them and uh, just be like, this is our first rotation down here. Is there any particular individuals we have to look out for? Troublemakers? Uh, no, I, I, I don't think so. Um, everyone's been pretty, pretty on top of it recently. Uh, it's, yeah, there's, there's not really any troublemakers right now. Uh, we had one, one old man who complained a lot about his stomach, but that's that's pretty much stopped. So, yeah. Any advice uh, for somebody new? I mean, well, wh- where are you from? <laughs> Not here, my dear. Yeah, I I grew up in Chi most of my life, um, but I was kind of told to to enlist. Uh, As we all were. Yeah, I. It's a little scary. Some of the stuff that I I I don't want I don't want to bother you with this. Um. No, no. I mean, what else are we doing? You said it's calm down here, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, none of the prisoners are here right now, so That's why we're so just quiet. we're just kind of patrolling. Uh, they're all at the training grounds right now. So, uh, yeah, it's it's always nice whenever you're on prison rotation and the the prisoners are at the training grounds because you just kind of walk around and you don't have to answer questions. You don't have to do anything. Like, um, yeah. It's pretty chill. Pretty chill. What's your name? Uh, my my name is Johns. Um, Johns. Yeah. It's nice to meet I, you, Johns. I'm sure we'll talk again. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm. 
you're, you're, it looks like you're going to be on the opposite shift, so uh, we might see each other in, in passing through shift change. They but... rotate sometimes, though. So. Yeah, sometimes. Um, just be aware, though, if you're working the training grounds, um, there's this there's this like little girl who we took her cuff off once on accident, and she got wild. Um, so what she, she do? She like. She got into one of the guards' heads, like he, he was terrified. Like her eyes went all black, and sh- and he just started screaming. I don't know, I don't know what happened. Little little girl, you said. Yeah, uh, not not like little little girl, but she's younger, a teenager, I think. Um, See, that's that's the information I need. That's I will keep an eye out for her. Where's her Where's her cell? Just oh, so I can all, stay away. All the way down on the other side. Okay, don't go there. Unless I have to. Thank yeah. you, Johns. No, no problem. Very kind. No problem. I'm going to go walk around. And Kyrus is going to leave before he can ask her name. <laughs> uh, Toman, as you go left, uh, you see again a uh, one of those large wooden latchkey doors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there... another guard just hanging out. Yeah. Uh, is this the way to to, do, to walk the grounds for the other cells, or uh, you may have overheard where this is our first day here? We're trying to figure out the the lay of the land. Oh no, that's the uh, this is the prisoner chapel. Uh, how oh. often do prisoners come to this chapel? Uh, we usually try to bring them a few times a week, but um, yeah, I mean it's empty right now. Like I said, uh, or uh, like what John's over there was saying is there's there's no one here at the moment, but. Yeah, they usually come here a few times a week. Uh, we try to... A lot of them are a little... They they call them heathenistic, but, uh, like, especially the Chahosranis and such that, you know, believe in the big flying sky snakes and all of that coming to save them. Huh, that's odd. Yeah, All right. Well, really weird. Yeah, thank you for uh, letting me know. Mm-hmm. Uh, if right. you want to find the cells, you got to go all the way down, take the last right, follow that hallway down, and you'll find the cells. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, if any of my team did not hear that, I'll relay it. We can just make our way down that way. <laughs> Kyrus is going to catch up to Lucian and be like, I was just told of a very scary little girl messing with people's heads. He, like, in this specific space, he like looks at you, but let, lays it on pretty thick. Oh my, well that sounds quite terrifying, and I hope we don't run into her. Yeah, her cell, I guess, is at the far end. Well, I imagine we know where to steer clear of then, don't we? Definitely. And then Lucian just like lights in flame because he's lying and he breaks the pack. <laughs> <laughs> the wink that, counteracts that's it. Why I wrote in when they were only like <laughs> That's right, that's right. Only when they're alone. Uh, I thought of that floor, one. You come in. <laughs> come on, uh, buddy. Yeah. Hell no, this way, this way. <laughs> uh as you head down, uh, you can see through like some like kind of windows that to the left hand side is like a kitchen area, uh, and then you see another long hallway towards the right, uh, the very last right before it it ends. Another hallway, uh, you see another guard, just kind of like leaned up against the wall, twiddling his thumbs a little bit. Um, you find another door at the very end of this hallway, and. Uh, yeah. Was there anything different about this guard? As we see it, it looks like his garb is different, but is that not? Uh, that was just Kyle copying and pasting. Okay. Um, tokens. Yep. Just making sure. All right. Well, uh, I'll, I'll talk at a volume where the guard can overhear and correct me if I'm wrong. I'll say, well, uh, I believe this is where we're supposed to do our patrols, everyone. So let's, let's head in and I'll try to open the door. Yep. Uh, yeah, door opens up without a hitch. Um, as you step in, you see that there is another door to the left-hand side as soon as you walk out, and then you see a long row of cells. And yeah, I'll just kind of like march down the cell aisle. 
Uh, as you do walk by, you do see a soldier in more, um, more like official garb, has more medals on his chest and does appear to be higher ranking. Uh, we'll see you all kind of walking up. Uh, who, who are you? I will salute him as, um, as I did the uh, instructor previously. Oh, hello there. We're new recruits. I mean, not new recruits, but we're new to this rotation, this walk through the dungeon and the training grounds transferred from uh, myself and two of my friends are transferred from Chi. And at that mention, Lucian also bows. Oh, okay. Yes. So you are my new, uh, my new guards. Uh, yes. I am, I am Sergeant Maximus. Maximus. Well met. Oh, that's our guy. Again. Uh, the prisoners are not here. Go take a walk around, familiarize yourself. Uh, we do have the correction room straight over here, uh, for any of the prisoners who get out of line. Uh, we take them in there for corrections. Uh, we do have, uh, through this door over to the right, uh, we have another row of cells for some of our, uh, how do I want to say this? The, the ones who have more potential to cause issues. Yes, troublemakers. Um, so we we only have three over there right now. We have a uh, a young girl who has tried to mess with some people's heads. Uh, we have an older man who just complains and complains and complains about his stomach. Uh, and then this disgusting, aggravating little Kleppen who spoke out about Rashalan in Nent and uh, she is she gets on my nerves to be honest with you but regardless um, that is who we have housed over there right now um, the correction room you must be careful though because there is a um, a disposal chute that don't fall down at you you will get hurt um, and you will end up covered in things you do not want to be covered in. Trust me, happened? I've seen it. Uh, there have been people oh. who have fallen down in there, and oh. it's it's disgusting. Uh, not only will you get hurt, but it's, it is gross. Uh, you are covered in, in all kinds of sticky stuff. So, uh, do not fall. Do not fall. All right. Uh, otherwise, I will be at... Uh, I am doing my rounds before changeover. Uh, there is a desk that has the guard schedule on it go check that out go explore a little bit and then when we when you are done come find me yes sir sergeant uh maximo sir salute again yep he returns the the head nod uh as a superior officer and then walks off with his little checklist great Tumen will head down and check the uh troublemakers row knowing that nobody is here currently but still just getting a lay of the land mm -hmm. uh yep you head in and you see that it does branch off to the left with another row of cells um thistle can you give me an awareness check real quick yes would something like perceiving or investigating or intuiting perhaps work for this we're gonna say perceiving okay good answer good answer that is going to be a 15. Uh, as you walk pot as you walk by the guard desk, you hear um, what sounds like kind of a whisper. Am I not able to make out anything of what's being said? Should I not with a 15. <laughs> you one more time. Shine. Oh. Oh. Um, uh, gold, what? You look over on the desk and you see that there is uh, just like a little book sitting on the corner of the desk. Um, uh, hello? It knows the word, so I imagine you know who it is to be found. State your purpose. Um, am I talking to a book? You would watch as the book kind of like shifts up a little bit as some like incorporeal little like arms and legs kind of like manifest in and around this space as it like lifts up and there's still no face on it. 
Ah, oh, there is much wisdom to be found in my book, yes. But the question is, how can I help you? Um, uh, hi. I, that is a, a very good question. Um, I'm not quite sure, actually, how a book will be able to help with what we're here to do. I also a don't know if this is a safe things. place to talk. Ah, leave the security of this location to me. You have found me, and I have found you, and that is step one. Step two? Well, we will discuss as necessary. Okay, um, what can I call you? My name is Telvayula Lucenare, but you may call me Telvay. I imagine it is simpler for your tongue. Hmm, mm-hmm. Um, can you repeat the, the shorter one? <laughs> Tel- Telvay. Telvay. That's very close for the first time, yes. Thank you. Um, are you, can I, uh, do you walk? Do I carry you? Uh, are you, are you coming you, with me? Am I leaving you here? You would watch as it looks like the, the book can walk of its own accord across this table. Okay. Um, I, I guess come with me. Sorry, I've never spoken to a book before. <sighs> oh, there's a first time for everything that I imagine. That is very true. Um, I'm... Come with me. I'm going to, um... See if I can catch up with one or more of the others and introduce you. Have you... If that's all right. I have questions. There are as many questions this book has for you. Have you collected the Ketek? Um, no. We just got here. We are, um, getting a lay of the land, so to speak. Um, no one has been collected yet. Ah. There are eyes on the inside. You must find the Ketik. They are. They go by Shunmi, I believe is their current name here. Find them. Okay. They will aid you. Sounds good. Um, I guess, do I uh, leave you here then and then come back after I found him? <sighs> leave me. Take me. I am but a book. This is <laughs> not actually me, you see. Oh. All right. Um... I, I guess I'll take you with me. Are you all right if I pick you up? Is that okay? You'd watch as the book just kind of like falls onto the table. Kind of like complacent, just like easy. All right. I uh, suppose I'll take that as a yes. And this will very, very gingerly carry the book. Um, kind of like a child. <laughs> just like cradled <laughs> in one arm. <laughs> and just kind of like look around for a moment to see who else is around. Um looking for one of another one of us <laughs> wherever we spread out to so uh yeah i mean you guys get kind of a lay of the prison um is there anything else that anyone is wanting to do before the official changeover I'm curious to take note of the schedule okay <laughs> probably question why thistle's carrying a book like a child <laughs> <laughs> Just like balancing on a hip, you know. <laughs> this yeah, will to- to- have that. And this will look around, make sure no unfamiliar ears are listening. It spoke to me. The book. Just, yes. just to be clear. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. I, I know what you're thinking. I thought it too. It knows the password. The book. Yes, and I'll I'll hold it out in front of me and say, oh, "Go on, um, uh, hello. I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name." The this desire for Roger <laughs> to not respond right now is <laughs> very high. I'm honestly, kind of hoping that he wouldn't. <laughs> uh, don't tell your friends about me. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think in this instance, uh, as far as Telve is concerned, step one has been completed, and he is not going to engage until step two has been completed. <laughs> Incredible. Um. Well, are you it, okay? It, I'm fine. It spoke to me. I, he must be shy. I suppose. Um. He did say that we're supposed to collect a ketek. <sighs> Ketik. Oh, I see. Um, well, <laughs> his name is Shermy. <laughs> and I'm sure that this book will have much more to say, I hope, 
once we've found him. And you won't think I'm crazy for very much longer. Cat tag. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go find this wonderful person. All right. And so as as you all kind of start getting ready for shift change, that is where we will end our session. Uh, be Ooh. sure to keep an eye out for the Kings of Tyranny Part 2 playtesting coming out next week. Hop in the Discord, discord.gg slash mythcraft to learn more, chat with us, and uh, get a bunch of cool new uh, content. Be sure to join us next week, and until then, keep crafting those stories.